In September 2011, the Occupy movement was formed when protests in New York City were disrupted by unruly cops. They maced innocent bystanders and kicked cameramen to the ground without reason. It's not clear as to if these events against the movement is what caused the Occupy Together movement to form so quickly, but it has become the largest and fastest growing protest movement in American history. The common slogan of we are the 99% has been widespread across the country, and the Occupy hashtag allowed the movement to reach to such a large audience. However, the movement, which has been described as a democratic awakening, is difficult to distill to a few demands, and has received wide criticism and prejudice because of it. Or so the media says. Protests against Wall Street are spreading today to a number of major U.S. cities, including right here in the nation's capital. President Obama says the demonstrations are expressing the frustration that so many Americans feel right now about the economy, jobs, and the fallout from the financial crisis. Now the talk on Fox News is that it's costing taxpayers money for police to do their job. Not one bankster, not one bill, they could arrest hundreds of protesters, but not one banker has gone to jail to pay for his crimes. Because they didn't violate any laws, Tavis. They kind of... Oh, come on, brother, Bill. How do you know? How do you know that they hold it, hold it, hold it. Our media today is into creating the news rather than reporting it. And that's very dangerous when they're creating news rather than reporting. Obviously, I've, I've heard of it. I've seen it on television. I think it expresses the frustrations that the American people feel that we had the biggest financial crisis since the Great Depression. Now, in cities all across America, yesterday, property was damaged, streets were blocked, commutes were interrupted, and hundreds were arrested, and dozens more were needlessly injured. Now, here in New York City, the birthplace of the Occupy movement, two months ago, nearly 300 people were taken into custody. At least seven police officers were injured in the line of duty. And yet, somehow, despite the day's disturbing amount of violence, liberals remain shockingly silent on the issue. Occupy Boston. I think has happened as an outgrowth of what people started seeing in, in New York, which actually had a lot to do with people's dissatisfaction with the financial system and how the economy was running. But there's a deeper issue here around um, how money is allocated, um, how money has been allocated in the government recently with the bailout of the banks, who when we look at the history, we can see that the banks have been um, using and, and abusing people. The capitalist system is not one that's based upon um, about, about, you know, say harmonious distribution of resources. We need to say it's not dirty hippies pissing in the bushes asking for free stuff. It's much broader than that. There are complicated issues, complicated concepts being discussed down here. Everybody needs to know that. And the people who say that's, you know, it's the dirty hippies, it's the criminals, it's the drug addicts. Well, if you think that's what it is, come down here and improve the mix. The Occupy movement is an uprising of the American people who want a true democracy. Not a democracy for the corporations and by the corporations. Not a democracy that's set up by the politicians that puts their interests ahead of everybody else's. We want a democracy that actually speaks for the people, by the people. I decided to look into their cause just to see if I could find one. And lo and behold, in the first page of the Google search, the Wikipedia page came up. The protesters seemed to really have a cause after all. A few that I could pinpoint exactly because of one small article. Here are their demands as follows. And you can quote me on this. They want more and better jobs, more equal distribution of income, bank reform, 
at a reduction of the influence of corporations on politics. I visited the site here in my own city of Boston on a number of occasions, many of which is inhabited by, are you ready? Fully employed, hard-working Americans. Sure, there is a share of homeless people and hippies, but most of the people they occupy have jobs, homes, and choose to be at the camp. A friend of mine, Amy Emmons, decided to come with me and talk to some people out in Dewey Square. We met tons of people, young and old. It's important. It's important because it has created an atmosphere where people are thinking about things not in a way that's dictated by this this gridlock in Washington, but they're beginning to see it from a, a different perspective, which relates to the economy and how it works for most people. And and that has not been really the conversation until Occupy came along. Uh, somebody said, why are you here? I remember September 11th, 2001. I was working all day. I heard about it on the radio. I didn't get a visual until I got home on the TV. My daughter, my 12-year-old daughter, was watching the coverage. And she was pretty upset. And I sat down on the couch, and she came up to me, and she gave me a hug, and she said, Daddy, why do they hate us so much? And I said, well, America is the strongest and richest country in the world. Because of that, Excuse we have me. influence all over the country, all over the world. Not all of them seem to be hippies out here. A lot of them are even parents. And I've seen children living out here. The campsite itself gave off a vibe that just made me feel like I was okay. obligated to stay so there. Why, do they, why are we entitled to it? I don't want to be entitled to that. Right. And then she says, them rich people that got money, they work their ass off for it. How can you, what kind of work do you have to do to make $10 million? The best way I can sum up what's happening here is uh, the fact that it's a large group of people who are acknowledging the fact that America has a lot of problems. And one of the main criticisms that we get is that we don't have one specific cause that we're sort of trying to bring to the table and we don't have any specific answers. But my question is that when there are so many things wrong with the system, how can you pinpoint one and just ask someone to fix that?